Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin Davis and today we're going to do an in the field flight test of the MJX. This is the Bugs 8 that just came out. It's an entry level FPV racer. Uh, they call it an FPV racer. Whether you think it's that or not, that's totally up to you. But this is for someone that's just progressing from the toy drone up to the next level, which you might not want a full scale racer if you don't want something super fast and aggressive and uh, possibly dangerous enough to rip your face off then this is a cool entry super entry level it's all plastic frame on here it has LEDs front and rear right on the front right there and on the rear and they're red in the rear and white on the front the top hatch comes off and there's actually a really nice little video transmitter and onboard DVR in here as well so you can record your videos I have a little micro SD card right here and you can change up to eight channels on here it is on the C band so if you're with other people you can use your monitor that comes along with it and you get a set of goggles over here to my left that you can slide your monitor down into so that's pretty cool you just open this little hatch right here and it slides right down inside uh, when you're ready to move up to the goggles I always tell people to start out with the monitor and move up but this just pops off and pops on pretty simply with a couple standoffs there you don't have to remove these screws to take this top off because the screws are actually part of the posts that hold the top on kind of like a, a heli canopy uh, years past that I flew. Now we also have 1806 motors on here. I believe those were, let me check my notes, those were 1600 kV motors. So they're not super powerful, which is great because it's swinging a little larger props. It looks like almost like a six inch prop on here and that'll make it fly really, really smooth. Now one other thing about this before we start flying is the fact that this doesn't come with beta flight or clean flight, so someone wanting to do this for the first time, you don't have to mess around with a computer, you don't have to mess around with PID settings or tuning this guy to get it to fly right without camera vibration and all that stuff. So very easy for the absolute beginner. Um, so I would recommend it for someone who's just wanting to uh, experience what FPV is all about on a really mellow plane. And that's, that's who this is for. Now I have a second battery here. This is a 2S battery that comes along with it with a little X-T30 on here. So it's kind of nice. They do have X-T30s on here. Now one other cool thing I think is neat about this is that these little motor, these uh, prop nuts right here, they actually spin off by hand. And I haven't seen that before on other motors. Now they did keep the cost of it down. Like I said, there's no carbon fiber on this frame and it's all plastic, but replacement parts are going to be super super cheap so if you're doing this on a budget this is a great kit to get i think the kit with the goggles and the video monitor receiver there everything all together is like around 150 dollars you can get the naked version of it without the monitor for around 96 dollars currently i think on gearbest so that's pretty awesome so anyway guys let's go ahead and turn on the transmitter get this thing all fired up and let's go ahead and do a test flight right here out in the field now one thing that I did want to mention is that this does work with fat sharks so if you upgrade to some 5.8 antenna some better goggles than what they include with it with this screen you can do that later with this one so it is running 5.8 which is cool because we have that option so I went ahead and turned on the transmitter and now I have my FPV view on here and you can see channel 8 I'm on the C band and I'm on 5945 megahertz and and that's cool because you can get with other racers and get on a different channel and you can actually see your channel right here which is super cool uh, you also have an RSSI signal strength indicator on there and your monitor battery level I don't know if you guys can see that right there you can also change your brightness and contrast settings over here on the right hand side and you can switch channels but it does an auto scan as soon as you turn it on as well to find the channel that the bugs is on now remember also you can change channels directly on the quad if you go right here and move these dip switches they do include a little channel map inside the kit that comes along with this so you can figure out how to get to a different channel starting on your quad if you're racing with other people or if you're just flying with other people at a, a local field so let's go ahead and fire up the fat shark so we'll have a secondary backup and we'll also go ahead and hold down the photo button here on the right hand side 
And you can see on the screen that starts the time code in the bottom left hand corner. So now I'm recording straight on my DVR on the quad. You can't record on the monitor itself. Now one other thing about this is you don't see any kind of antenna sticking out the top on that monitor. So it's a recessed antenna that's inside the frame of the monitor. So that's going to be interesting. But let's go ahead and take off now. You can use this red button right here to unlock it. And you also have high and low. But you don't have any acro on this quad so if you want to do a flip it's an auto flip button uh, like I said for the absolute beginner but I flew this one before out in the gorge in my testing earlier this week and it flies really really smooth and that's what you want for a beginner quad so here we go let's go ahead and unlock those motors like this and come up off my launch pad and I'm flying line of sight today so I'll be using my monitor here and there we go, coming up into a hover test. Hovers really nicely. It's drifting a little bit. You could use a little bit back trim here with that. And I'm still recording on the DVR. But you really don't need to use much trim when you're just getting into this. I would leave all your trims at center. If you're brand new to this, there's no real reason why you want to play around with your trim. Seeing a little bit of frequency interference, but look at those LEDs on the front of the quad. Those are nice because you can tell what the front and the rear are. If you're learning line of sight for the first time, if you're moving up from something like a little house racer or toy drone, this is a nice next step. To learning how to fly quads and experience FPV for the first time. I'm seeing a little bit of noise out there on the monitor. That could be from interference in the neighborhood with 5.8 gigahertz routers. Keep in mind that this quad flies on the same frequency as some of your routers at home. Wireless internet, 5.8 and 2.4. Just cruising around and we also have the high rate mode. So now I'm in a higher rate. I can go a little faster. There's a little bit of wind today so handling the wind actually pretty well. Let's go ahead and come in a little closer and show you guys how it flips. If you press the right stick certain direction and hold down the flip button at the same time it'll flip that direction that you're holding the stick. So if I press forward on the right stick it's going to do it that direction forward. The roll flips work pretty good and the forward pitch flips. Let's do a forward flip as I'm going. And... Whoa, it didn't like that. And forward motion at the same time. Now I'd like to be able to upgrade the antenna on this FPV screen. Works really, really well close in, but once you get far out there, it seems to kind of lose the signal a little bit. And like I said, that could be my neighborhood that I'm in, but you can open this up and add a new antenna on there. Who knows? I'm sure there's going to be some mods out there for this uh, quad because I think it's going to be pretty popular. Like I said, this is mostly for people who just kind of want to fly without too much stress. If you're gonna fly this one for the first time, this would be a really easy one. So I'm in high rate mode right there. Let's go ahead and full throttle by us. That's as fast as it goes, guys, not super fast. But if you're teaching a young person, this would be the absolute best FPV trainer out there for someone young to get into this. Or maybe you just don't want something that's super powerful. Like you don't need a 100 mile an hour drone to uh, start learning how to fly FPV. 
You just don't. There's actually uh, a lot of people out there who just enjoy flying and cruising. This is it's definitely a cruiser. Let's see if I can go around some of this playground equipment here. Just taking my time cruising around. Flying line of sight, so I'm trying not to hit uh, any trees. You can test out the durability factor of this guy. Now, when you get on a low battery, I think you're gonna get like 10 minutes flight time out of this 2S battery on here. I think it was an 1800, or it might've been a, might have been a 1300. Should get about 10 minutes. Really wanna fly through those goal posts over there. Raining just a little bit today, but no biggie. Test out that yaw. It has a really mellow yaw. Everything about this quad is pretty mellow. Just gonna come back in. Been flying for six minutes now. That's how long we've been recording video here. It's a little punch out with a little bit of battery that we have left. Not a huge punch out. Nothing scary, folks. Now, our rear LEDs are flashing, so that means that we have a low battery situation. So I'm gonna come back to my landing pad, come back over here and set it down, see if I can make it back. There we go. And I'll set it down and hit that red button again. And I'll stop my video recording over here so it saves to the SD card. Might have to long press that. Okay, now it's stopped the video. Let's go ahead and hold down the red button and it killed the motors. The quad is also beeping, so pretty cool. The transmitter and the quad start beeping when you have a low battery situation so that you don't ruin your battery. That's kind of cool. It also got, by the way guys, it does have a tiltable camera, so when you're first learning to fly, if you're in that low rate mode, there's no reason to have about 60 degrees worth of camera tilt on here. Look how much camera tilt you can actually get, it's quite a bit, so um, when you fly more aggressively, you can tilt that up as you learn to fly faster, but just starting out, you can have it horizontal if you want, or you can tilt it up about 20 degrees. You can go up a little further, 35 to 40 degrees there, and way up, way, way up. Probably don't need that much tilt. You can also look down. If you're flying up and you want to look down on something and record something as you're coming toward looking at the ground, you can do that as well. Not quite a 90 degree tilt on there, but close to it. Now you can take this monitor shade off and you can pop this off the transmitter and pull this arm off the back of this that holds this on here. And you can slide this down inside your goggles. Don't forget to turn them on. You can turn on your monitor there. And once it's on, I see my FPV view there. And now this becomes a set of goggles. So you can do your FPV for the first time. Like I said, I always recommend this to do second, secondary, uh, after you learn how to fly with it right here on the front of your transmitter. Uh, this is kind of the next step up. So start out with your monitor and move up to the goggles. So let's go ahead and do some FPV flying, cruising around with the Bugs 8 